Welcome to this week's Flippinar, show number 16 of our actual, I guess you would say, Flippinar series. Welcome to those that are here early. Go ahead and uh, load your questions. And um, we'll be ready to rock. Got my partner in crime with me here. You can hear Major. Yep. Okay. And uh, let me get the uh, YouTube link here. So I can load it to flippinart.com. I really need to start having you to do this. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. Earn, earn your stripes, as they say, stripes. Put a K in the stripes, stripes. But what's going on, people? We're here live on this week's uh, Flippin' R on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. It would be nice if you share this with a friend, family member, someone that thinks this may could be of benefit be beneficial to them also. But uh, we appreciate everyone that's already in the chat room. And uh, we, we're ready to rock. Oh, that's, that's what the problem was. I didn't have a screen wide enough. OK. Retard. OK. Dope. Homer moment. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so uh, what's going on, people? Um, announce where you're from. When you ask your questions, that'll help us out. You know, to to rep where you're where you're located. Uh, but we are live on F Facebook, on Instagram, and YouTube. I was even thinking about Periscope, but I don't know if I got enough devices to handle all that. You think we're good at three? I think we're good. I think we got everybody covered. Okay. All right. Yeah, everybody got at least one of these if they mm -hmm. are doing anything like this. So, um, so I think we got some questions already, Adrian. I don't know. Let's 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 get. It. All right, guys. I'm always saying where the shout outs are from. We got Grand Rapids, Orlando, Palm Beach, uh, New York, New York City. Florida, D.C. Hey, guys. So we're just going to go jump right into it. I see something flowing on. Oh, in Louisiana. That's on Instagram. Um, Bargain Apparel on YouTube says, Hi, Flip Man. I put out almost 200 signs and no calls from sellers after a week. Should oh. I keep putting out more or put them somewhere else? Well, the first question I would uh, have to ask you back is out of those 200, how many of those signs do you still think are up? Uh, that's a very important part of the equation is how many signs are still up. All right. You heard that um, bargain pair also respond and we'll get back to you. Mr. Steve James on Facebook says, do you recommend sending yellow letters to Fizbo's on Zillow? I guess you could, but what what prevents you from pin, picking up the phone and just calling them? Their phone number is right there. Um, well, I, I didn't even think about that. What you just said, I thought you. I, well, there's no realtor in there. Why would you send a yellow letter? And if they're trying to sell it on Zillow, that their contact information is right there. All right, Steve. That hope that answers your question. Um, Pablo on Instagram, how much time does the seller have to move out after we close title work? Um, dealing with a situation right uh, with that right now. As a matter of fact, a student partnered with me on, on that deal, a student, and um, he got his bread. <laughs> $2,500 of mine is still being held up, but that was something I agreed with the buyer that I would help. It's a buyer that I deal with a lot. And uh, I told him, you know, he wanted to feel a little, a little, a little bit better about it. So he held back $2,500 of my money. And uh, so we got to get out of there. So 30 days is a normal reason, is, is considered a reasonable amount of time. It may take a little longer, but it shouldn't take much longer than that. But everything, anything is negotiable though. So, and we gave her some incentive 
Uh, we're gonna let her keep her, well, obviously keep it a deposit anyway if she leaves the property in good condition, but she didn't even have to pay the uh, the rent for this month on top of that. So just trying to give her more incentive to get on out of there uh, before the 30 days is up. So I can get my bread, rest of my bread. All right, Mr. Lapoleon on YouTube, thanks for making it. He says this is his first time session. Hope you get some useful information. Um, Shaq Smith, congratulations on your first deal with another wholesaler. You're very excited. Be sure to let us know how that turns out. Um, Viva says she just purchased her absentee owner list, and it seems like mostly condos, mobile homes, and et cetera. And she's in Tampa, Florida. Um, it's not really a question, I guess. Well, I, I, I guess I, I, it's not, but I can just say, uh, yeah, that, uh, if you got a list with that number of, uh, uh, well, number one, what's how, what's the size of your list? Number one. Uh, now, mobile homes are viewed a little. From my understanding, you people from Florida making correct this. Uh, mobile homes in, in in parts of Florida are, are held at a higher regard than some other parts of the country. I think in parts of Southern California, just because of where they're located within that market. With that being said, if um, that list consists of that many mobile homes, then what you'll probably want to do is is drive the neighborhoods um, where you know there are not as many if you don't want to deal with mobile homes and condos and, and target those particular zip, zip codes. So I would still probably uh, use that list, but um, I would already be getting ready to probably go with another one if, 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 that, if those types of properties are an issue for you. Okay, um, still shout out Detroit. Ohio, Lafayette, Buffalo, Atlanta. Emily Smith says, how much is it to be a student? So maybe you can go ahead and do a little bit. Well, yeah, uh, just so since she opened that with that question or whatever, but um, obviously, you know, I, well, you may not know it. If this is your first time seeing me, I uh, have over 200 videos on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on the notifications so you are alerted whenever new videos are uploaded. And when I go live on YouTube, just like every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern or East Coast time, as some people may relate to. But to answer your question about the cost of the courses and coaching, the step-by-step -step courses of coaching, if the 200 plus videos are not enough for you, go to flipman.net. The reason I'm not gonna quote a price here is because this video will go in replay mode on YouTube. I quote a price here. A year from now, the prices will probably be different. So just go there for the most recent and current prices. Just simply go to flipman.net. Cool. What's up, Mangiel, on Facebook? I see you over there. Post your question. And on Instagram, millions says, how do you negotiate an assignment contract with a for sale by owner? Well, number one, uh, negotiating an assignment contract with a for sale by owner, you don't negotiate an assignment, an assignment contract with a for sale by owner. You, you're only using a purchase and sales agreement, a normal real estate contract. Assignment contracts are for buyers. Now, I don't personally do it that way, even though I get paid via an assignment. I just use two purchase and sales agreements or a real estate contract, whatever you want to term it. And I get the difference via an assignment fee. Now, you can do it however you want to. I'm just telling you how I do it. If you go to YouTube, do a search. Is our boy here from last week, what, what was his name? Oh, my gosh. I can't even remember. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, man. Know. My man here from last week, man, post that video. It's a video on how to fill out a seller's and buyer's contract. It's, it's when I was doing, it's a, it's a it's a replay of one of the flippinars when I was doing it, the old format. It's like an hour and 26 minutes or something like that. If you can just do that, but just, just do a YouTube search, how to fill out a seller's and buyer's contract for wholesaling houses. And it's an hour long video. So that will identify and you'll see one of my funky thumbnails um, that should identify its mine. But that answers your question in detail. Lapoleon says, how can you tell when you're making a bid too low for the market you're in? He's in North Carolina. He says he lives by the go low, be embarrassed rule. So when is it too low? <laughs> if, if the seller's not giving you a price, it's never too low. Um, 
it's never too low. Well, see what you're, you're, you're the, what you're trying to accomplish is you're trying to number one, obviously get the deal, but you're trying to get the seller's least amount. If they want to play a cat and mouse game with you, they don't want to give you that, then you got to try to pull it out of them. So the way you pull it out of them is you offer a ridiculous amount, low amount. All right. Now they may hang up on you sometimes. That's fine. You're probably going to have a deal anyway. But if they were like, no, I can't do that. That's too low, blah, blah, blah. Then your follow-up question will be, how close can you come to that amount? Boom. So if the numbers work for you, roll with it. If they don't, or you still won't ask me that the best thing I can do, even if the numbers work for you. But if the numbers don't work for you, thank them for their time. Let them know if anything changes, you please give you a call back. That's how I do it. You know, I have to do it that way, but I'm just giving you the, the mindset of it, it can never be too low if they're not giving you a price. All right. Um, giving a shout out to Guy on Facebook who says, how are you guys doing? I just started and two properties are under contract and now I'm anxious because I'm waiting on two cash buyers um, to get back to me by tonight. So good job there. And Mr. Offroader on YouTube says, hey, Ty and Adria, I'm the one who closed my first deal last Thursday for $8,500. Wanted to say sorry for not coming on YouTube, but to thank you for your can't see it, help. Much thanks. Way to go. He says, thanks for your videos. Um, getting back to our questions, Jasmine Rodriguez says, what's going on, Flipman? I know you have a course on flipping vacant commercial buildings, but what about flipping vacant commercial lands or lots? Well, in a sense, it's sort of the same thing um, because the objective, now anything that you can get extremely cheap is going to be somewhat a lot easier to, to wholesale. But um, when, when you start talking about what I talk about in those videos is that you you add value to those properties by getting a uh, national retailer, a national tenant to commit to to commit to the property. Uh, and I'm not going to go through the numbers because it'd be too long. But same thing with land. If you can get someone, uh, a national retailer, to commit to, and what I mean by commitment is that they're going to lease it on a long term lease. Uh, maybe a ground lease or maybe a combination, but um, so that's virtually the same thing. Now, if you just found some vacant land, commercial, uh, again, it, if you can get it cheap enough, then boom, yeah, you could probably get an interested buyer. Interested buyer, but the most difficult thing about land is the, the, trying to come up with a number that's going to be attractive. Now, the, the thing I do like about land, which I've done very little of that probably once, um, is that you don't have to show it. <laughs> they can just drive by and look at it at any time, uh, assuming that there's not a sign on the, on the property saying for sale with, you know, whoever's contact information and may, may throw a monkey wrench in your deal. But, yeah, it can be done uh, just depending on what direction you're trying to go with it. Okay, on Instagram, Turnersville2000 says, good afternoon. Is there a ARV formula for mobile homes? And what do you suggest as a good formula for earnest money? Well, with mobile homes, uh, you have to think of mobile homes in terms of car, like a car. They see mobile homes, is, whereas with most residential real estate, meaning a house, an actual single family rental or house structure. Uh, in most cases, they appreciate. Where with mobile home, it's just like a car. Every day, it, it, it depreciates. Now, the land is sitting on may appreciate, but the actual structure, the mobile home itself, goes down in value. So the way you come up with an ARV, if you want to call it, but just a value, similar, as I said, similar to a car, uh, who's the manufacturer, what year it was built, the size, uh, obviously the condition, uh, do they have title in hand? It still needs to be paid off. Um, uh, will it have to be moved? Because if it has to be moved, that's one thing versus if it, it can remain on the land and the land is purchased with it or if the lot that it's sitting on can be rented. So all of those factors will go in. But if you're trying to get the value of a mobile home, the easy thing to do is you gather all that information that I just quoted and call a couple of mobile home dealers in your market. They'll tell you what they'll probably pay for a, a property 
a mobile home like that, and you can base your price off of that as far as how you'll make some money. Now, wholesaling is, is not as cut and dry as it is with a house. It could happen really fast, but in a lot of cases, you're going to probably have to end up buying it because nothing prevents a cash buyer or someone walking up to the owner if they ever met and giving them cash. They do a bill of sale. It's theirs now. They give them the title. Whereas with a house, it's, it's not. It, it, there's a process. Each time a house is sold, a new deed is created for the new owner. So, uh, so that press why it just can't happen that simple with a house. And then you have to have title search, and title insurance, and all that. Where the mobile home, that that process is not needed. Okay, on Instagram, um, Double Doors REI says, "Hi, Flipman. I requested your one-page contract. Thank you for that. Is that for sellers and buyers? And will I be able to do a double closing with that? If not, do you have one that I can have, please?" Well, um, yeah, it can be used for sellers and buyers. Sometimes your buyers will want to use their own contract, uh, but uh, that's fine as long as the terms are, are in your favor. So that, that's not an issue at all. Um, but as for the double closing, yeah, you can use it with, for a double closing. Nothing prevents you from doing that with that particular contract. And anyone wants to contract, you can simply go to uh, flipman.net to um, – all you have to do is submit your phone number and um, your name and phone number. Tech, it's a text system, and you'll receive a text back, and um, you can it'll it'll tell you where you can go get the contract and download it for free. All right, you heard that free contract, guys. Um, Fat seven hundred four Instagram. If you could get a property under contract with zero earnest money, would you, or would you at least willfully put up a dollar? Um, well, a lot of times, um, just, just being transparent, I'm not telling you guys to do this, uh, but uh, I, most of the contracts that I send over are by email. So I'll put $10, $100. Like, here lately, I've just been putting 100 on there. It, normally, it never, it, it never even exchanges hands because they, most times, the sellers just don't care about that. You know, the, you're solving their problem for them. They just know the contract is the starting, or oh, if they don't, you explain it to them. That's the starting process, point of the process of getting their house sold. So, but to answer your question correctly, is that I would always give them something. Um, nothing, nothing says you have to give them anything. It's just uh, more said a good faith, but there's no amount that has to be paid. There's no law on that. And when you're dealing with real estate agents, you know, they're just not going to, deal with you and you know they're gatekeepers to the seller you know the seller has hired them to uh sell their property for them so a lot of times they're gonna their opinion is going to matter a matter to that seller meaning the realtor so normally they're going to want a minimum of five hundred dollars a lot of times a thousand twenty five hundred just depending on depending on where you are when you're talking about residential okay our is it a deal question the first one of tonight hey flip we've got a possible deal on the table it's a three bedroom, one bath. After repair value is eighty-seven thousand. Repairs are about twenty thousand. I've got it negotiated with the seller at fifteen thousand. Owner owns it outright, no mortgage, no renters. Would you say it's the deal? What was the price? He has it on the contract for fifteen. And what was the ARV? Eighty-seven. And as a renter. No renters, but it does need repairs of about twenty. Oh, that's a that's a deal. That should be a deal. For thirty five, yeah, that should be a deal. Uh, I would probably put it out there, probably at um, at uh, what do you say thirty? Let me see. Uh, he got in the contract for fifteen. Correct. Yeah, I probably would put it out there about twenty nine, something like that. There you go. You heard it, Eric. You got yourself a deal. Make it happen. Um, sticking with YouTube. Raphael says, I have a seller that lives blah, lives out of town and four probate properties. Two of them are being rented out. How can I wholesale this less than retail and saying that it won't sell discounted because he could rehab and fix himself? Excuse me, guys. Should I keep trying to make a deal or let it go? Wait a minute now. Did he give in the numbers of price rent? Well, what was just? Can you you understand that? Just break it down to me. Let's right. see here. Really, no numbers are listed. How can I wholesale this less than retail 
and saying that he won't sell discounted because he can rehab and fix himself. Well, it doesn't sound like a deal, Raphael, if he's not yeah. going to sell discounted. Yeah, if he's not going to discount it, there's there's no deal there. You know, the numbers are the numbers. You didn't give us any numbers, but from just what you're explaining, it doesn't appear to be a deal there. All right. If you can add more details, Raphael, go ahead. I'll keep an eye out for it. Um, Mike Macklin checking in from Raleigh, North Carolina, says he loves this forum and glad to finally have made it to a webinar. He keeps missing you. Flip an R, I apologize. Correction. Mm. It keeps missing them and made myself make it today. Well, glad to have you, Mike, from Riley. Let's see here. Truth seeker. Here's a question. How do I bridge in a deal with another wholesaler that has a property under contract but can't find a buyer? He said, how does he uh, partner with that wholesaler? Yes. Well, the way I do it, uh, now it's rare I'm on the, the, the buyer, in, buyer end. Normally I'm going to have the contract with the seller and if somebody wants to bring me a buyer, I'm, I'm cool. But if I'm on the buyer end, I'm still going to treat that other wholesaler. If he's having trouble finding a buyer, uh, I'm still going to treat him like a seller. So either one or two things are going to happen. Either we're going to agree to split whatever is made on it and I go on the contract for the price that he has with the, with the seller or he says, hey, I want 5000 whatever you make above that, boom. And, or I'll go 5000 more with a contract. But I'm just going to do a normal purchase and sales agreement. I'm not going to do a JV contract, nothing there. I need to be in the chain of the transaction. And the only way to do that is, in my opinion, is with an actual, the same contract or similar contract that he has with the seller, which is a purchase and sales agreement, or what he should have with the seller. So that's how I would do it. All right. Um, Facebook. Corin oh, Jackson. Oh, I want one thing, and then, then, then the buyer will have a contract with me. So it has to go through me to ensure that I get paid. Go ahead. Facebook, Ms. Jackson. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. How do you know a property is distressed other than seeing that the building is run down? Well, distress can mean, and well, in my definition, distress can mean not necessarily the, the the property is in need in need of a lot of repairs. The stress can mean that they just can't afford to keep it anymore. It, it's more the seller's distress than the property itself. Now, if you're just looking at a property and you're saying, "Hey, it needs repairs," then that's one thing you can term that as distress. But I more look at the situation to see if it's a distress situation. And if that includes a, a, a property that needs a lot of repair, so be it. But it just may be uh, going back to the reason why people will sell. They may be motivated, may motivated to sell because of divorce, job loss, or income loss, medical situation, tired of being a landlord, um, out of town owner, or they inherited the property from a death, and so on. So. But if you're just asking about uh, trying to figure out what the repairs are just from the outside, normally if it's raggled on the outside, it's, it's raggled on the inside. <laughs> normally. <laughs> okay, on Instagram, Fat704 says, do you think that giving a mentor $2,500 and half of my earnings for a whole year is a good deal to be honest? I don't think I need a mentor with all these YouTube videos. <laughs> no brainer. <laughs> How would you answer that, AP? Well, I would say if you got $2,500, you want to give up, go ahead, partner. You know, you can come this way. But other than that, use what you got available to you for free. 200 plus videos. Flipman. Yeah. Man. Well, I, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but <laughs> number one, I charge less than that. Two, two. And, and you get and you get coaching and you keep a hundred percent of your deals. The only reason I would split a deal with you is if I bring something to the table, such as a buyer, something something of that nature. But I'm going to teach you how to fish and feed yourself forever. Whereas you're going to the goal is for you to keep a hundred percent of all of your deals. But that's the same thing. If you produce a buyer for me or some part of the deal, I'm willing to give up 50% of my deal. That's, that's, so that's why I have no hesitation asking for 50 because I'm willing to give up 50. So to answer your question, if someone wants to charge you $2,500 and 
half of your deals for a year, you do the math. You pay me what my fee is right now. You can check at flipman.net. You keep 100%. I'm not hard to reach. You know, so there it is. All right. You heard it, Fats. Um, Alex Garcia says, do you know if it's legal to wholesale in Florida? It's legal to wholesale in all 50 states. Anywhere, unless you're going outside. I had a student. Uh, she wouldn't come on, uh, which is fine. I understand. Uh, she made, in Jacksonville, uh, she made five grand one day, closed on it. And the next day closed and made 20 grand in Jacksonville, Florida. I ain't have to say that, but you know, wholesaling is it, it's nothing illegal about it. What is supposed to be illegal about it? It's simple assignment of contract. Anyway. All right. Continuing on, Jason Truncone on Facebook. Should I go after absentee owners only, or do you find that owner occupied houses are still viable? Well, uh, with owner or occupied houses, I, I I do those occasionally. Um, targeting owner occupied, that's such a huge number. See, the reason that you target absentee over owner occupied, in most cases, not always, if someone has multiple properties, you can only have one homestead. Any additional houses would be considered absentee the likelihood of them having a troubled situation or motivation to sell the additional house versus the house they live in is, is a lot greater. So that's why you target the absentee owner versus the people that live in the, the current house that they're in. It, it, the numbers just work out. It's just, just simple math on that. Um, so that, that'll be a tough road. You, that's, that, that's what bandit signs are for. You're targeting everybody, whether it's the house they're living in or there's an absentee property with a relative, whatever. That's what bandit signs are for. That's why it gets, it's the, it's, it's the shotgun of shotgun marketing because you're just looking for eyeballs to your message and just whatever comes in, comes in. And some of those that come in is from owner occupied houses. But if I'm going to, if you're talking about direct mailing owner occupied properties, I, I would strongly advise against it. That'll be a expensive, expensive on taking. Okay, Smitty on Instagram asked simply, "What was the most difficult deal you've ever done?" I have no idea, man. <laughs> You're talking about a lot of deals. I had a lot of difficult deals. Uh, I have no idea. That would be something I have to get some thought to. Just a question like that. I had a lot of difficult deals. I had some easy ones, you know, but um. Fair enough. Think about it. Maybe they you can yeah, think of something. I, yeah, it's man. Yeah, that's one that took a little extra effort on your part. You had to go, you know. You will yeah. come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Tremaine on YouTube says, Mr. Ty, have you done any deals with houses that need to be moved, meaning they're on peers? If so, did you include the cost to move it inside the purchase price? Um, I've had people to call me about those, but that's not what I do. So I've turned them down each time. So to answer your question, no. Okay. What's up, Veronica from the Natty? Checking in. Um, Bria Stevenson on YouTube says, if you had $7,000 to spend on marketing, what kind of marketing would you purchase? Please be specific. For example, if you would do direct mail, what list would you use? And she's in California. Well, um, the thing that I would do, and this is just a new marketing technique for me, others may have already been doing it. What I would do is, um, and I don't know what time you're going to actually put into it yourself, uh, but you could easily hire someone to do it for you with that type of war chest to start out. But, um, I would buy the, uh, an absentee list. And uh, now as far as your criteria, um, I guess with that kind of money, you can be a little bit more uh, direct or laser focused. Uh, probably do three bedrooms, two baths. Um, 
I don't know what market you're in, so I don't know what the minimum. I, I would do an assessed value, probably of um, I don't know, a hundred thousand or more, which may not be nothing in your market since you're in California. Depends on where. Um, obviously, absentee, in-state and out-of-state. Uh, square footage, I probably wouldn't do anything less than um, than eleven hundred square feet. Um, I would probably do, let me say, back to the set value, 100,000 to maybe um, a million because of where you are. Um, now, this is just because she's in California now. Um, so that's what I would roll with. So and then I would probably buy, you could spend, let me see here, um, just, you know, this is going to be just a ballpark. Basically, you can spend, you can get about a thousand names for 200 bucks. So, I would probably buy at least a thousand dollars worth. That now, you know what? I wouldn't even do that because what happens is that you know time changes. So I would probably start out with two thousand, and uh, then start forming for phone numbers. You can pay someone. Um, uh, well, the way I pay pay well, you you could pay someone. Well, I I, I would pay someone a dollar per number that they locate. Now, there's a process of going through that, which, you know, that's what findseller.net is for in my course. But, um, and that's, that's going to be one of the most effective ways. I don't know if you want to do banded signs, but, you know, they're hard to beat. You know, they, so you could spend by 600 banded signs probably for, let me see, two, probably for 750, 800 bucks or whatever from dirt cheap signs. I know you can get them there that cheap. You can check around. And that's two color, uh, nine by 24 horizontal flutes. So those are two things. Now you could do go the direct mail route, but I would rather you spend the money and 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 getting someone to do those phone calls for you. No one looks to up the phone call numbers, but also do the phone calls for you. Uh, someone that may be hungry that has a sales background, uh, that just that doesn't mind working off commission. And the way I do it, if they're making calls for me, we just go 50-50. Um, if someone's making calls for me. So, um, so that, those are some things that I would do. And, and you're probably not even out of two grand of two grand of that. So, um, and that should last you over. Cause you, and then understand that uh, one deal is going to get all your money back. Plus, especially in California. Um, so you shouldn't have to do anything else uh, after spending that much money. It doesn't take that much, but she asked the question because she says she had seven big ones that she could spend. So, but just make sure you know what you're doing. All right. Felicia Milborn on YouTube says someone wants to do a JV, but doesn't want my name on the contract. How do I make sure to get paid? They Nothing said they don't want too many hands in it, but I don't want to trust that they will pay me. You don't have anything. You, you, if you, if your name is not, in the chain, you don't you don't have anything. Hey, if if you don't believe that, go watch the movie um, the uh, the founder. That's all I'm gonna say. Go watch the movie the founder. You know you may not like it. At least get to the end of it. Well, you need to watch the entire thing of it. So watch the movie the founder. If you don't think having your paperwork in place on trying to get paid matters or whatever. Now. Um, sometimes I do stuff without doing it, it's just more or less a fear. I really never gotten burnt, but, um, I don't, I don't recommend anyone else doing it or whatever. So, um, people deal with me. They say, Hey, I want you to sign this, whatever. I'm not going to create the document because I, I, I know I'm going to pay you, but you don't know me. So if you want to send something over, I'll take a look at it. But as far as those JB contracts or whatever, again, I'm not going to, that's, I'm not going to rely on me getting paid that way. I have to be in the chain. Of, of contracts, you know, um, but if it's a cash deal, whoever this is, that it, that shouldn't even matter. If it was 10 people involved, it's a cash deal. Um, and then depending on how much it is now, sometimes uh, people call me all the time and say, I need you to sign this NCND or whatever. And uh, I'm dealing with the broken route and the, the sellers, the sellers rep or whatever. I've been through that and, and wasted a lot of time in my life going to that and first question, somebody called me about students or whatever, they want me to look at something. Are you talking to the owner? Now you're talking to the broker, that's just, that's what commercial, but um, that's all I got to say about that. 
Okay, we have um, La Debra Milton on YouTube. I'm sorry. Says on your one page contract, is it vital that the seller put their social on the contract when first signing, or can it wait until the paperwork is sent to closing? Just like in the uh, instructional videos that I have here on YouTube that are free, along with the other 200 plus videos, see, I put NA there for not applicable. I think that's what that means. So, no, you know, just, just like in the videos, no, you, you don't ever hear me say, ask for their social in those videos. Okay, Tangela McCrary on Facebook says she lives in Atlanta where the real estate wholesaling seems to be saturated. How do I work through this? No such thing. Four million people, Metro, not possible. Just get in there and do what you do and make it happen. Not, not possible. All right. Got students over there making money, so it's not, it's not possible. Not, the entire state of Alabama is only four million. Just Metro Atlanta is four million. And that's probably like a 50 to 75 mile radius or whatever, but that's fine. You know what I mean? Only thing that means is just a lot of opportunity. Your, your job is to make sure you're doing your, you're putting your best efforts forward and letting people know you exist. If you're doing a, an effective job of that, you do 30 deals between now and this time next year, that may mean two to 400 grand, then, you know, come back and talk to me, you know, but make sure you're doing an effective job of marketing. You'll get your share of the deals. You know, 30 is not a lot. Just think about all the transactions that are going on in the market of that side. You only do 30, but you made a couple hundred grand off of it. You know, no, it's not oversaturated. All right. On YouTube, uh, Mom's Enterprises says her most recent leads have been coming from out-of-state owners with tenant-occupied properties that are cash flowing. I'm sorry. They gave an outrageous number. How do you get them down in price? There's no magic wand. Um, and, and in a lot of cases, now, and offers are free now. Don't get me wrong when I say this. But if it's worth 200 and they want 200 wrong, you need to move on. It's that simple. It's rare someone's going to go from 200 to down to the number you need, which would probably be 100. That's just so rare. But again, offers are free. You can always uh, make an offer. So, you know. Okay. Instagram says, this is Urban Paracord. What about dealing with the title once you have a property under contract? Well, in most cases, what I recommend, especially starting out, just wait till you get a buyer because they're normally going to dictate that anyway. So just wait, wait until you get a buyer. Now, if it comes back not clear, we're well, going to come back clear anyway. So uh, you do what it takes to clear it if it's possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Um, but um, so in my opinion, just wait until you have an actual buyer ready to go because they normally will dictate that. Okay. Um, David says, we talked yesterday, Flipman, when I called you, see, he's available, guys. When I called you, when I, I was negotiating with the seller, I started with 20 banded signs and got many leads and two under contract. Banded signs are very effective, and he hand wrote his, guys. So we'll call that a testimony right there. <laughs> we got to get Festival. a check here. You got to get a check first, but it's well, good, but, but, but he's taking action though. Action, action, baby steps. And where is he? Uh, David, tell me where you are. Uh, I think he's in California, say. if it's the guy I'm thinking about. Okay. Um, equitable interest on YouTube. How many deals have you got in the works from direct calling? How many people have you contacted? Um. <clears throat> Well, I've only been doing it, what, two months or so, uh, maybe approaching three. It took me a little while to figure it out, and I was doing it all myself. So close one, um, have two others in the pipeline on the contract. So we'll see. All right. Mangel on Facebook says she has a house under contract, but the county it's in only has one title company. And my buyer has never closed there before. The company doesn't know anything about wholesaling. What do I do? 
She said the, the, the what happened now? Uh, the, the title. There's only one title company where she is in the county where the home is. You know, you don't have to use a title company in that county. In most cases, a title company in any part of the state can close it. Uh, but if you have a buyer ready to go and he's dealt with that title company before, it is a lot easier to get them to do it if you have a client of theirs that wants to do more business with them. You know, so um, so get a, get a deal in place and getting it closed will uh, it, that that'll that'll be simple because you don't have to use that title company in that market. Okay, let's see here. What are your thoughts on a wholesaler becoming licensed? And this question is from Southern California. Just your thoughts on it. Um, it's, that's just going to be a personal thing. Um, it's so much information out there now with the internet versus years ago. Um, having that license is not as big of a tool as it used to be. Um, now, now the interview that I just did, uh, that every, oh man, y'all got I'm just, just before I go into that, you guys are really uh, showing a lot of love to Aaliyah and Antoine. You know, of course they got a great story. Uh, most of the comments and stuff have been positive, couple of negative ones in there, but that's cool, that's people. Uh, but, um, you know, they crushed it. But my point of bringing that up is that she's an agent. <laughs> So let me, you can look at it like this. She was an agent for eight years and didn't even know what wholesaling was, right? So how, how did being an agent actually benefit her? She didn't even know what it was, but that's most agents. So, uh, but again, it's gonna be a personal thing. Now, what did help her in that transaction where she made the 70 grand, her and her husband, is that um, the lady was looking for another house and, and I'm sorry, she was looking for an assisted living home, but she didn't have to be an agent to find that for her. You know what I'm saying? She could have been, you know, just because she's the outgoing person that she is, could have been resourceful. She could have found that. But, but again, um, you're asking the wrong person about being an agent. I, I don't see a need for her, especially now. Uh, I, I don't know how objective I'm being on answering that question. What do you think, A? Mm, we'll go with what you said. I I don't think there's a need. Right. Just waste waste of time. You can get them made some money by the time you pay for that license. But hey, I can't learn. Well, let me say that I learned this stuff. But see, I couldn't sit in those classes. I I don't know how much money have to be at the end of the rainbow for me to pass that that course. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I my mind can't take on something. Uh, like if I had to go to take a college class right now, I couldn't pass. It. I got to be highly interested for me to retain the information. I guess with, that's how we get. Some people always like to, you know, educate themselves in, in the academic sense. But me, you know, it, it's just a waste of time. They tell me about how to make some money. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to learn it if it's some. You know, I got to sit down and read. Well, uh, I, uh, I now trust me now. I do. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I do uh, consume a fair amount of foolishness through the idiot box that a lot of us watch on a daily basis. Don't get me wrong, but when I'm trying to actually, if I had to sit in a class, whoo. <laughs> I remember, just just get off track here real quick. I remember when I was in college and we, the free night you go, I don't, people that are being not whatever, but and, you, and they give you the syllabus. I went to a literature class and they give you a syllabus and uh, you know, you had to go buy your books where I went and bought the book. The book was probably like this. So it was on like, we'll just say it was a Monday. She said, we need to have that read by Wednesday. Hey, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I don't know how I passed that class. I got a, I probably got, I guess I got a C. I don't remember, but anyway. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I finished that stuff. And then that was before the internet when I was in college or whatever, before it really took off or whatever. But that book was this thick. She said it was Monday. She said we had to have it finished read by Wednesday. I know what you uh, did. You went and got the yellow book version of it, the cliff note. I don't know what I did. Eat it. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I, I have no idea. I don't even remember. All I can remember is just her saying that. I'm like, 
She must don't think I got nothing else to do. <laughs> you know how long it takes me to read a book like this? Huh? You all see what I'm saying here? That's the Bible. The Bible ain't that thick. <laughs> Golly! Anyway, so I had to get off track like that, but go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Okay. Um, on YouTube says, uh, was Levine Brown, did you ever look into foreclosure surplus that I briefly discussed with you? If so, what do you think about it? If not, why not? Oh, I think I think he had an actual conversation with me. That's the guy out of, I think he's out of New York. Um, I'm trying to remember what we, we talked about. Yeah, I, I remember. I thought we had um um man, I forgot, man. You got to sort of put put a brief description in there again, juggle my memory, man. You have to understand I talk, I, I communicate with a lot of people via text and in uh phone calls or whatever. So um, but I remember the conversation. I just don't remember what was the gist of that the foreclosure surplus. I, I don't remember what it was. All right, Mr. Brown, just add to oh, that. Oh, 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 I remember. I remember. I remember. Oh. Is that, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, when you go to auction, I think like if the bank is old, we'll just say 100000 but it sells for 120 that twenty thousand dollar sub surplus is actually uh is due the seller has right the person that got foreclosed on they have right to that twenty thousand because they only owed the bank a hundred and so there's a way to try to to uh to number one make them aware that they can get the money and then they pay you and you have to sort of trust them to pay. So that's what we talked about. So yeah, that that would, yeah, uh, that would be a little bit too much work for me, you know. Um, he yeah. said, yeah, pretty close and he's from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, I knew he was up in that in that corner up there somewhere. Okay, yeah. I Mom's see. enterprise to answer I, your this, question. This. He says, she says, um, her stream went out. So yes, mom, it is being recorded about 10 15 minutes after it's over with you can go back and rewatch it on youtube so i did ask your question so yeah just stream back to the top of the hour and you'll be able to get that answer there um mr cook says thank you both just discovered you today out here in southern cali on my own we'll be soaking up these videos like a sponge does water thank you for your help well welcome mr cook and get the watch you got 200 plus videos Available free. People get, you think people finished? get tired of me saying that? I, no, yeah, I do, but mm, mm, yeah, okay. Just well, there's no other way to say it, though. That's the only way you can say it. I'm, uh, I just want to go ahead. I'm just saying, you ask. Okay, Jody Ross asks if you are JVing a property and the wholesale with contract with seller has a contract that says not assignable what can i do if i have a buyer and i need my cut oh the contract says not assignable contract says not assignable now you could probably still double close it um but uh w w why would the wholesaler have a contract that says it's not assignable i don't know don't know that, that's a good question but i'm and the wholesale would close it though. So I don't, I don't know. We have to go back and look at that. Let me see if let's see here. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, so David, there's this ebook on the app store called Real Estate Investing No BS. It's only a couple of dollars and you can finish it in a day or two. It gives you the ins and outs of wholesaling. A couple of bucks too much, David. 200 plus videos are absolutely free. Just saying. Oh, he oh he was oh he was just promoting. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Um, after I get the two contracts signed by both parties, how fast do we move to closing? This is from Nicholas. Say it again. Mm. After I get the two contracts signed by both parties, how fast do we move to closing? 
Um, normally within a, a you know probably ten days, ten business day. I mean, um, well, ten days total probably. Uh, no more than ten business days. You should be able to close unless there's some issue with the with the title. Okay, let's see here. Millions on Instagram asks, "How do you feel about online auctions?" For for houses, um, it. If you got the money, you know, um, I don't know what I feel about it. It's something I've never really done, probably looked into it very little. Just doesn't fit what I do. Um, I'm not sure if I can answer that. Um, wait, what was his name? Millions. Uh, I'm not sure if I can answer that, million because you do, you do know you have to have the money, right? So we just start right there. You got to have the bread. So. All right. Um, how often do you or do you owner seller eh, owner seller finance properties with little to no equity? I, I I've done that in the past, but probably in the last whew, six or seven years, I haven't done anything like that. You know, but I have done some stuff like that in the past. Uh, that is a great way to um, to build up some rentals, um, to build up some cash flow. It's not my thing, but I uh, would highly recommend it um, if, that, if that's your goal to, to build up some cash flow. That should be everybody's goal in reality. So, Okay. I'm Frank Ramirez. When I wholesale houses in order to establish LLC, do I have to get some kind of business permit? It just depends on what your the process in your state. You know, so you can easily find it out from your uh, uh, website, your state name, maybe the revenue uh, site. Um, just just Google how to obtain an LLC in whatever state you're in, or how, how to obtain a business license in whatever state you're in. Um, and that process should be out, ironed out into great detail for you. Okay, let's see here. On YouTube from Westchester County, New York, says, seems like bandit signs do stay up long here in my area. I put up 50 in two days and only got three calls. Do you suggest I try another map marketing method or stick with signs? Um, um, yeah, you want to stick with signs. 50 is not a lot, assuming that even if all of them were still up, you know, it takes a little time. But once you get over the 150 uh, sign threshold uh, over, we'll just say over a three week period, um, you should, should start receiving a steady amount of calls if, if you know, at least about 75% of those are still up. Okay, what is the website for online signatures from for Ms. Angie on YouTube? Wow, you know what? Um, I've done, I have that video, just do a, a search for e-signature uh, e-signatures e for wholesaling houses or, or real estate investing. Just do a search on YouTube for that. You should see my video. The reason I can't answer the question because I, I, I copped the signature that I use all the time so long ago. I don't remember the site, but I have a video on it. So I know I uh, mentioned it in that video. And then I show you how I created and how I use it on the contract also. Tell you everything you need is in those 200 videos. <laughs> How many times hey, you say hey, hey, Somebody hey. can show me a better, a better site, uh, a better channel, whatever, on YouTube, whatever. I got a free course for you uh, that has that much information. You know, I'm just to my own horn. It's all there, guys. Um, if this is your first introduction to me. Uh, I know you hear me say it, but you won't believe it until you dive in. And don't be lazy. If you don't have the money to pay me, just take advantage of the free videos. Can it get any better than that? The young man called me today, said, well, I can't, uh, I can't learn like that, but you can't afford me. So if it were me, I have to always put myself in, if I were in your shoes, I'm going to take advantage of what my resources will allow me to take advantage of. That lets me know how motivated you are 
if you want to even tell you watch one video and wanted me to sit down with him for free and talk to him. One video. I, I, I guess I, that was a hell of one of my videos, but take advantage of the free information, man. It, it, it's there or whatever. Bless you two. Bless you two. Bless you two. I don't know what we get. Well, I don't even know how we operate it without the internet before, Adrian. Do you? I, I, mm mm. Because wow. I'm thinking it's everything right now. I mean, shoot, internet go down. It's like, ah, it's a state of emergency in my house. I can't, shoot, I can't even cook because that's what my recipes are. <laughs> <laughs> Bologna sandwich tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not really. But okay. This is a, is it a deal question before we close out, pulling up to the end of this hour? But Mr. Eric Hill, who's in our neck of the woods, says he has a deal negotiated with the seller for 58.5. The after repair value is 114. Repairs are anywhere between five to 10. Is this a deal? And what should I put it out there for? Um, it's in Greensville. Alabama? Yep. I said our neck of the woods. And uh, and what do you think about it? What, what was the price? Uh, the after repair value is 114. He has it negotiated to 58.5 with repairs top at top out at 10,000. Yeah, that, that's a deal. Um, I don't know how 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 easy it'll be to find a cash buyer in Greenville because that's such a small town. Uh, but that, you know, just on the surface, that's a deal. Um, I would probably put it back put it back out there at about 69,000. And I'll probably be pretty firm on that because it does leave still a lot of meat on the bone or whatever. But um, again, it's, it's um, I don't know how, how, how far is Greenville. If Green, I don't think Greenville is that far from Montgomery. Well, yeah, I think it is. Um, hey, but you won't ever know, you know, you never know. So uh, the good thing about it, houses probably don't, come up with great deals like that in a market like that, that often. So maybe you create a frenzy, even though it's a very small town. So make it happen, man. All right. Um, Ty, do you subscribe to list source or just buy per list? And this is oh, I just, just on, uh, pay as you go. I bought one today um, for, um, for my phone call deal. Um, but um, I just pay as I go. There you go, Aaron. Sanai, what is the importance of assessed value on tax records? Well, basically, that's the county's appraisal or the city, however it's done in your state or the state's appraisal of the property. Then they use that to base on whatever the take tax rates are on what they're going to send you a bill for, for real estate tax, for property tax. But it is sort of in line sometimes, most of the time, with probably what the true value of the house is. Normally, assuming that the house is in excellent condition, is sometimes, is in most cases, is less than what it would appraise for. So the assessed value may be 100000 but it, in reality, it may appraise for one twenty five. you know, in excellent condition. So hope okay. I, I hope that's an accurate definition. Anytime that I give a definition to some guy, just Google define, assess property value and see if this guy knows what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> Mariko. That's, my, that's the street definition. I didn't even know. Oh, this, mm. Mariko says, is it safe to lock myself into a seller's contract without yet having a buyer? I would imagine the answer is no. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. There's no reason to go in for it. He says, so then what or how do I go about finding my buyer, A to B, B to C? How do I find C? Yeah, put it under contract. Work on finding the buyer. Get the deal first. Negotiate. Lock it in. The buyer should come. I can answer that yeah. one. Yeah, thinking of in the terms of fishing, even though I've never been fishing before, but you put the bait on the hook to attract the fish. The bait in this situation is the contract that you have that you negotiated a great deal, but it needs to be a great deal or some really attractive bait for that particular type of fish you're trying to catch, which is a cash buyer. So you stick that 
bait in the water and <laughs> there you go. A check in your hand, baby. <laughs> That's it. You might have hey, you may have several. Oh man, we we oh we just went down on uh just went down. Okay. Uh let me go back up here. Yeah, we're back going back live on uh Instagram. But um anyway, so but yeah, that's the just stop being silly. Um yeah, having a deal, man. I know you're terrified, but assuming you had a so-called buyer that says, Hey, I buy in this area, this probably blah, blah, blah. you did all of that, got exactly what he said, and he said, Oh, I need to finish up this rehab, blah, blah, blah. That happens. That's why. When you're every, in my opinion, you negotiate deals just like you don't have a buyer. And normally that's gonna keep you in the mindset of negotiating the best deal possible. Now you may have three guys ready to roll, rock and roll on it, but you wanna negotiate your deals, especially starting out, find a great deal. I don't know how I can, I don't know how I can stress this any more than what I do every week. Find a great deal now. First, you have to understand what is a great deal. Sometimes you won't know until you test your market and your, your market will know and depending on the air and condition, all that stuff. But find a great deal, buyers are easy. It is not difficult to give away what? Money. You're getting good, man. You, you listen, yeah. you listen. Okay, Delicia Ball says, if a home is vacant and tax records indicate that the owner's homestead is listed as the vacant property, how can I contact the seller? Thanks in advance, but let me know if you have a video on this. What, 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 what? She said the property was vacant? The property is vacant, and the tax records indicate that the owner's homestead is the vacant property. Oh, so the, so the mailing address is the same as the, yep. the vacant house. All right. Uh, well, I do have a video, but I'm going to give you a bleep. A, 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 a Got brief, video uh, about it? Like here, here it goes. Here it go. Here it go. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> but what you want to do first is go ask the neighbors on each side of the house, cross the street. Sometimes they know what happened. They know how to get in touch with them in the business. Give them an incentive to uh, let the labor know you're interested in purchasing the property. Okay. All right. So only after you, after the property is purchased and leave them your phone number. They're probably not going to give that person's phone. Sometimes they will, uh, but you leave your phone number. You leave open in it like that. Then you can obviously go to, just go to Google and Google their name. Uh, you may find a new location or phone number for them. If that doesn't work, use some of the uh, sites like Intellis and see if you can locate relatives and reach out to them either by phone or mail and offer the same incentives that you did to some of the neighbors. Uh, so that's those are gonna be your best routes without you know digging a little deeper in your pocket. All right. Stacks 89 on Instagram asks, does your podcast carry all 200 videos? You know what? Um, I want, whenever I decide to start doing those podcasts, <laughs> I said, I'm going to upload all these videos. And, and the process that I have to go through to do it, I really just upload the recent. Matter of fact, I don't even have, I need to have been saying I'm going to do it over the last couple of days. But I, I haven't even uploaded the um, the video for uh, the uh, couple out of uh, D.C. that did the 70K to the podcast. But I'll, I'll get it up there in the next couple of days or whatever. But um, but to answer your question, no, I had the brilliant idea that I was going to do it. But uh, it, it, it's it, it, it takes it's a process of getting it up, getting them up there for Android and Apple devices. So now nah, I don't know if I ever do that. I probably need to, and maybe just hire somebody to do it. Cause you know, I probably could do it in a week or so. Uh, but at this point, no. All right. We're going to tie an Instagram question and a YouTube question together. When a seller asks for proof of funds, what is a good response to tell them? And then on YouTube, I just spoke to a seller, but the property is owned by the bank. What should I do? They ask for proof of funds. 
All right, now if it's a private seller that's asking for proof of funds, I say, yeah, I'll get that right over to you. In most cases, guys, you don't have a deal. Motivated sellers just don't talk like that. They just don't ask those questions. They just don't go hand in hand. It's gonna be rare because I'm not saying it's 100% that way, but it is rare to ask for proof of funds. They just don't, guys. Um, but assuming if they do, you have to make a, a call and maybe get some. There's, there's several services out there that offer it, such as realpof.com. But uh, normally, motivated sellers don't ask for, ask for that. So, but as far as dealing with a foreclosure, they're going to always want it. That's going that's a realtor thing more than anything. And then the earnest money that they'll want is probably a grand minimum. So again, realpof.com if you need proof of funds. All right. Jack Christine, YouTube. I was wondering, have you gone through any legal issues on your contract you offer online? Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, no, I've, I've never had any issues. All right, that was simple. Uh, let's see here. Is wholesaling single family houses easier than multi-unit apartment buildings? Well, houses are always going to be easier than any of it as far as speed. I'm on average, you know, just we're just averaging. All, you can always have a deal that's easy. We don't care what it costs, depending on who the buyer and situation. But for the most part, you can literally close a house deal in three or four days. It's rare that's going to happen with apartments or commercial, you know. So, um, so to answer your question, houses are easier. Off road, I read your comment. Thank you, darling. You're so sweet. Erica Martin had, I ain't even gonna tell you what it said. None of your business. Erica Martin on YouTube asked, What is proof of funds and how and why should I obtain it from a cash buyer? What is what now? Proof of funds. Oh, I don't, I don't act buyers from proof of funds. Um, I can just, just, just conversation, you'll know how serious they are. You know, they're normally not going to balk at, balk at uh, the speed that takes the close. Um, they're normally, you know, as far as earnest money, that's gonna, not going to be an issue. You, know, you just talk the talk, man. You could always be a hustle, don't get me wrong, but they're, they're so easy to figure out if somebody's serious or not in this business. So easy. So to ask them for proof of funds, um, I don't, you know, I just don't, you know, I, I really never had an issue with that. And I've had buyers to pull out or whatever. Some most of the time, you know what, most of the time that'd be, that's my era. Um, and I might, I may be trying to be a little greedy or something. I get what I deserve on it. So for the most part, it's easy to, to identify where someone was serious and not in this business. All right. Trend, you posted, posted the question I'm going to ask, but I can tell you the answer is no. Do you, Ty, have a payment plan for your coaching course? <laughs> no, not not really. No, um, no, 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 not like no. I'm just going to officially say no. All it used right. to be a lot cheaper. I, I gave you an opportunity. It used to be as, as, as you see what the price is now. The day of this video. I used to sell it for for three three forty seven <laughs> three forty seven. I sold it for one ninety seven. You know, but oh, you know what? It, it's actually a happy birthday to to my YouTube channel. As of I think it was uh, Tuesday, August eighth is uh, the first video I uploaded back in two thousand and eight. Uh, August eighth, two thousand eight was the first video I think I uploaded. I may be wrong, but I know it's close in that date. So happy birthday to Flipman.net YouTube channel. Yay! Where's the cake? Where's my cake, Asia? Let's see what happened was, um, yeah, the next question that was on uh, YouTube Instagram. How do you best explain to them that you're a wholesaler? I've had sellers ask me if I'm the person buying the property. Um, you never get into that conversation with them. The answer is yes, because you're the one signing the contract that says purchase and sales agreement. Doesn't matter where the money comes from. Yes, the answer is yes. All right, Aaron House says, I wish you guys would do a Q and A every day. No, 
Oh, oh <laughs> y'all don't know how much it takes to put this on, man. And we barely got here uh, today. Uh, I, I'm normally uh, an hour, so maybe a couple hours in advance. I don't do anything pretty much uh, after a sudden point this day, but um, got some other stuff I got going the next couple of days, and I had to try to get some things uh, taken care of before before I get going on that. So uh, it, it was a challenge making it happen today. So uh, I wish I wish it was that, you know, but it it, it, it it takes a little something to put this on. Let me just say that on my end anyway. I don't know about on that end. On my end, it takes a little something. <laughs> it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, but no, my girl does well. She's she's producing her tail off, co-hosting her tail off. Make this so much better. Go back and look at when I was doing it by myself and look at it now. You know, it, it's just better, in my opinion. You all can let us know, but um doing it with her, you know, makes it a lot easier because I don't have to try to sit there. Uh what's the name said? Uh 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 I'm already doing enough, uh, uh, but when I'm there trying to read it, make sure it ain't no foolishness coming across. <laughs> you know, so I got to somewhere read it first. You know, so she she can read while I'm asking the question, and, and you know, make sure we're getting the appropriate questions out. So I'm gonna give a shout out to Ms. Rita White on Facebook. She's been on here because I can see her, and I asked her to have a question. She put no. Boy, I love her. The way she, yeah, she she wrote exactly how I would say it. So I, I like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yes, Adria does do a great job. Thank you. Nicholas 15 says, if you're dealing with a real estate agent and they ask, mm, and they ask for a thousand or three thousand dollar EMD, do you have to actually have the money? It's not coming out of your pocket. Well, if you're dealing with an agent, you need to already have a game plan going in on that because they're, they're going to want it. Um, now, anything can be negotiated or whatever, but uh, dealing with an agent, you need to already have that game plan ready to rock and roll as far as proof of funds and earnest money of $1,000 or more. Making it away with 500 but you 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 uh, you got to have that. Um, you got to have that game plan ready to go. Have you had any problems wholesaling townhomes with the HOA? You know what? I've never wholesaled a townhome or a condo. Our market is not like that as far as residential. Uh, we have them, but they're not in that much of an abundance where they're that attractive. They're very difficult to move when it comes to wholesaling. Now, I've gotten a lot of calls over the years on them, but never been able to put a deal together. So that HOA can be a deal breaker. So that's why they have to be extremely cheap because that has to be taken in consideration. Um, so to answer your question, I've never, I've never actually done one of those before. All right, guys, um, picking and choosing between these last few as we round it off. But Raheem from Philly says, remind me why you choose net instead of .com. Because you're talking about on, on just the flipman.net mm -hmm. or sellers.net, it's because the .coms are taken. And I'm not willing to pay for them. So, uh, and, and nowadays, even though more people are familiar with .com because it's the most not known extension, domain extension, um, people will go where you send them, you know, because social media is so big or whatever. People only go to my website probably for two things, either to get that free contract and or to, to sign up. That's it. And the most people will reach out to me when they get ready to sign out, it's rare someone signs up for my courses and coaches without actually contacting me first and saying, you know, may have an additional question or just making sure or whatever. But uh, I would love to have flipman.com, but, you know, I know what they want for it. I'm not willing to pay for it. I'm, I'm good. I, and I done branded the hell out of flipman.net now. So, you know, you see all this guy, logo, little funky guy. I guess it, I guess I could trade though, because I used to use junkers101.com. But um, I don't know why, how and why I came up with the name Flip Man. But I, I, I guess somebody, if somebody wants to do some research, if you could find the video where I first started mentioning that name, I, oh, wow, I am uh, I might have a surprise for you or whatever. But uh, I, I don't know when I started using that. So uh, I just started branding it. And um, so when I decided to get the flipman.net, because I wanted .com, 
I knew the dot net was available a long time. And so I think it, I've only had the dot net less than two years. Uh, may have just been around a year. And so again, I started branding. I created that logo that you see there. I don't know if I did a good job on it or not, but I used the dot net with other stuff too, because it did, like I said, at the end of the day, people will go where you send them or whatever. I would prefer the dot com, but I'm, I'm, that's some, something I'm knowledgeable about, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Stop rambling. So, but I branded the hell out of flipman.net now. So it is what it is. I'm just going to say the logo, man, you got the head size right, but the body is more of a pookie version. If anybody <laughs> <can be pookie. laughs> may, may, Hey, maybe if I give me a shirt just like the one in the logo, then mm -hmm. yeah, I might look more like the guy. Let's, oh, let's, let's work on that. How about that? Okay, we'll we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Um, let's see here. David on YouTube says, "Is having an option period is having an option period relevant in the wholesale contract?" Um, not for the most for me, not and normally no. Um, but again, you know, it may be a, a, a negotiating tool that helps you put a deal together. So uh, I wouldn't not say don't use it or whatever, uh, but you know, it may be a negotiating tool that, that helps you complete a deal or at least initiate one or be able to put one on the contract. So, hey, we, we got to round this up, man. Um, we were an hour and 18 in. We started on time tonight. So uh, guys, I really appreciate, you got something else like you got something on your mind to say somebody else said something or something. They, they did, oh, they was so good. K on YouTube says, I like your logo, Flipman. Y'all both have cute milk dud heads. Keep branding. <laughs> <I'll get, yeah. laughs> How's it going? Um, anyway, we're going to end this flipping our on that. Oh, somebody else said something? Oh, yeah. No, Trent just wanted to know where he can sign up for your course. So do a little house cleaning, close it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Flipman.net, my man. Uh, yeah, you see it. The, the look logo here you can go there to sign up flipman.net uh you'll see the options there love to take you on as a student make this money but uh again the 200 plus videos make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel if you already subscribed go turn on the notifications so you are alerted whenever i upload new videos then when we go live on youtube also on instagram flipman.net that's f-l-i-p-m-a-n-d-o-t-n-e-t is spelled out and on Twitter, the Flipman, and on Snapchat, Flipman.net. The DOT, the, the, the dot net is spelled out, D O T N E T. So again, we really appreciate you guys sharing and um, uh, your questions showing up this week. Go check out all those videos, especially the most recent video with uh, Antoine and Aaliyah in DC, 70K on their first deal. They crushed it. All other videos, testimonials, share this with a friend and I'm um, doing a lot more stuff on Instagram. So get over there. I'm posting stuff daily over there. But I am doing stuff daily over there, but normally just bits and pieces of these videos, this, this library of videos that I already have. So uh, again, we'll see you all next week and just share this with someone. Bless someone's day with this wealth of information that is free. You got anything else, eh? That's all I got. Deuces, y'all. All right, well, we'll see you guys on the flip side. And share.